Hi, I'm Nick Petamonti. I'm Sarah Levin. We're Project Objects Conservators here at the Brooklyn Museum. We have been working on the conservation of the Resurrection by Giovanni della Robbia. The Resurrection of Christ, a glazed terracotta relief from the early 16th century, is a powerful blend of Giovanni della Robbia's use of vibrant colors and dramatic postures, combined with high craftsmanship. The Resurrection was originally created for the Antonori family for their villa just south of Florence and remained there until 1899 when the piece was purchased and brought to the Brooklyn Museum. The artwork has been off view since 1999 due to renovations in the museum's galleries and eventually taken down from its wall in 2012 for examination. In preparation for its inclusion in the exhibition Della Robbia Sculpting with Color in Renaissance Florence opening on August 9, 2016 at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, the Brooklyn Museum's conservation team executed a year-long conservation treatment of the resurrection, the first full-scale treatment of the object in at least 100 years. The recent conservation campaign has involved extensive examination and structural intervention to address instabilities and make the artwork safe for travel and exhibition. Originally, the 46 separate glazed ceramic tiles were attached to a masonry wall of the Antonori Villa, and at some point before 1899, before the resurrection was brought to the Brooklyn Museum, each glazed tile section was removed from its original location in the villa wall and subsequently mounted to the large wooden backboard that we have now. The tiles were attached to the wooden board using iron brackets and wires embedded in the plaster. Over the past 117 plus years, this old mounting system has rusted, cracked, and become visibly unstable. Given the old mounting system's instability, we removed each tile one by one so that we could examine and evaluate each more closely. The full extent of damage and instability in the plaster mounting materials became evident at this time. Therefore, we began removing the old hardware and cracked plaster from the original terracotta using mallets and chisels in a slow and controlled manner, as shown here in a condensed time-lapse video. Removing the old mounting materials was essential for providing us further access to the tiles and aided in subsequent conservation treatments, such as when we discovered a complete loss to the original terracotta in this border tile. To improve stability after the plaster was removed, we bridged the large gap in the original terracotta using a colored and bulked epoxy formed around a wooden core. In some cases, old restorations were discolored and degraded so much that they needed to be replaced. A new conservation grade epoxy fill strengthens the tile structurally and is also designed to be detachable and lightweight. To make a replacement fill, we protected the original ceramic with plastic wrap and pressed the epoxy into the edge to capture its impression. Once the epoxy was fully formed and dry, we sanded it to match the original shape and reattached it to the original with a strong yet reversible adhesive. At this stage, we use acrylic paints to in-paint the epoxy piece to match the surrounding glaze's color, design, and texture as closely as possible. During the in-painting phase, we try to visually integrate new replacement pieces with the adjacent ceramic so they do not detract from the viewer's appreciation of the overall piece. On several pieces, the old restoration sections were in better condition, so we did not remove or replace them. Instead, we looked for ways to further integrate them with the original glazed terracotta. If the join edges were misaligned where the restoration and the original terracotta meet, we filled and in-painted this gap to aesthetically blend the two together. Where the restoration paint was disfiguring, we applied a barrier coating and in-painted a more appropriate and matching pattern over this to unify the tile's glazed design. Cleaning the tiles involved a combination of techniques, one of which was using steam to reduce dirt and grime that had accumulated over time. Steam is gentle and removes dirt from inside pores in the glaze and the terracotta. To secure each of the 46 tiles to the wooden backing board, we custom designed and created a new mounting system. Where there were large cavities behind the glazed tiles, a padded foam insert was made and inserted to add extra internal support. This insert was separately bolted to the backing board and the tile placed over and secured using several metal clamps to hold the tile firmly in place. We outlined each tile and mounting system onto clear template sheets. This way we would know how the piece was to be mounted, in what configuration, and where on the board it was located. 
To avoid accidentally locking one or more pieces out of the assemblage, there was a strict order in which the tiles were installed. When all the templates were laid onto the backing board, we were able to follow the template outlines to install each piece slowly and safely. Finally, the last step was lifting the object. The work weighs over 1,000 pounds, so we used a specially designed rigging cage to evenly distribute the weight and prevent bowing. This nerve-wracking process tested the strength and stability of our mounts, but was made easier by the Museum of Fine Arts conservation engineer, Dante Valence, who helped install the rigging cage and orchestrate the lift. It required the hands of numerous art handlers and conservators. Now the resurrection is stable, conserved, and ready for packing. And this new installation in the museum will introduce the artwork to a new audience to enjoy and appreciate for years to come.